Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another video. 2022 is coming to a close. It's almost 2023. And in this video, I want to go over all of the projects that I worked on this past year. I'm gonna tell you guys what I like about them, what I don't like about them, things that I'd like change about them, you know, all that hindsight stuff. I am still working on the Who Decides War DIY. Here's a little sneak peek of them. I got all the darning and stuff finished. Um, but I won't be able to finish them before the year ends, so I'm not gonna be including them into this video. But I got everything there on the rack behind me. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The pants are organized from oldest to new. So we're gonna start off with what we worked on at the beginning of the year. Starting off with the first pair of pants, we have the Gallery Department Carpenter Pants DIY that I did. I'd give these a solid like eight and a half out of 10. I don't think these are perfect at all, but I think they turned out pretty good. In general, the biggest issue I have with these pants is just the length of them. I did end up using a pair of pants that are, you know, short in length. And I did add this extension as well as open up the hem at the bottom. But even if I added this extension here, it is still a little bit small. The extension from the material feels a lot thinner than the actual pants material. And I got this fabric from the double knee panel that I took off. And it just sits kind of weird on my shoes. Now also the side panel that I added to make the flare. I wish I used like a lighter denim material. This is, it just sticks out too much to me. It's, it's kind of an eyesore in my opinion. I probably should have used like black or even like a gray pen. I think gray would probably look a lot better for these, but you know, it is what it is. And this is doing well for my YouTube. So I appreciate these pants regardless. <laughs> Next up we have the Balenciaga slashed denim. These were probably like my first ever like statement piece that I really made. I, excluding the wrap pants. This was the first pair of pants where I had to splice in two into one waistband, so as you can see here. So I learned a lot about pants, like the construction of pants during this DIY, especially like for the waistband, how to splice in things and make it fit at the waistband, even though they are different um, sizes. For example, these sweatpants that I used on the inside for these pants, by the way, these are from Mint Crew. Mint Crew. The waist was really, really big, and I managed to figure out a way to make it fit. Uh, correctly, I guess, into the waistband and comfortably. Now, one thing I wish that these were a little bit more high-waisted. They do kind of sit a little bit low with how much fabric are on these jeans because these are really baggy. And I think baggy jeans would look a lot better if they were a little bit higher up in your waist. Another thing is the front pocket here. You can see that the sack is still sticking out. I still wanted to be able to use this front pocket which is why I left it. I didn't sew it. I didn't fold it and sew it to hide it. But when I wear it, I just like fold it up there. Don't put my hand in this pocket and it'll be hidden. The only issue is, uh, you know, it kind of looks like boxers. <laughs> Loki looks like boxers, but you know, whatever. Overall, I give these like an eight and a half out of 10 as well. The length could be longer and I wish they were high waisted. If they're those two, then I'd definitely give them like a nine and a half or even a 10. Moving on to these Boro pants here, Boro Sashiko pants that I made. Off the bat, the main issue with this is just how they kind of fit on me. One of the main goals for the fit of them was to make them a little bit more cropped, you know? I can roll them up, get that cropped look, it look good for the summer. And if I did taper these, I think it'd look so much better. But right now they're kind of almost straight legged. Also, I think I'm using thread that's a little bit too thick. If I was to use a size six thread instead of a size 10, I think it'll look a lot more closer to how, you know, original Boro and Sashiko stuff is. But these pants can evolve over time because, you know, once in a while I can just end up hand stitching a couple of things here and there. And then, you know, over time, like in the next five years or so, you can see how it looks like, all the added extra stuff, and it'll just look even better over time. Overall, I give these, I like these actually. I give them a nine out of 10. This next one, I'm not really a fan of these. So the video was that I redid my first ever DIY pants. It's the first time I ever used like a different colored embroidery thread to Sashiko. And honestly, I'm not really a fan of it. <laughs> I think again, like I said before, I should have used a thinner size or a smaller size thread. Maybe I'll look a lot better, but I don't know. It just looks a little kiddish to me. Now I do like this rose here. I really like how this turned out. Um, but everything else, just the choice of the colors of the flannels that I use, I don't think it really mixes that well with each other. Now on the back side, I think the legs look sick. I think this is dope, honestly. This part's cool, but on the butt pockets, bruh, this looks so kiddish and cartoony. I really, I should have, I should have redone this right here. These two butt pockets. I give these like a straight up seven, even like a six and a half or something. <laughs> Now these right here, these uh, Sashiko Japanese fabric themed pants. I don't know what I call them. Sashiko Japanese fabric themed pants 
flare denim. I'm proud of these. I really like how these turned out. Straight up 10 out of 10. Now maybe I could have tapered them in a little bit more to the knee to give them more of like a, not slim, but like a slimmer fit. Maybe it'll look a lot more clean shape wise. Um, but other than that, everything else is just this bottom section here, the Aisashiko stitch, is my favorite part. If you look at it up close, it doesn't really look like much, but then, you know, in the video, or if you look at it from afar. And what's dope is that the base layer jeans that I use it has the perfect color, has the right fades, and everything to match the fabrics that I use, as well as the stitchings. Next up, we got these end repair flared shorts. Yeah. This project is where I learned that darning can be used or can be done in many different ways to create different kinds of looks. For example, on the back side, you can just darning stitch a word <laughs> like I did here. Um, and yeah, just darning, darning, darning. The one issue I have with these pants is the fit of them. The base layer pants, they kind of curve outwards. And I think that's because of the pants that I use, like the fit of the original pair. If I were to use like a straight fit or even like a regular fit pair of pants, as a base layer, I think um, it wouldn't have that curvature right there. It would fit how, you know, I wanted them to fit. So that's another thing I learned from this project. Um, but when I wear this, I just look like my uncle from the Philippines, you know, wearing denim shorts in the summer with a tank top. I don't know, like these don't look good on me. Um, and again, it could be because of that curvature or something, or it could also be because of the color of these. But I'd probably rate these like, maybe like a nine, I'll probably give them like an nah, eight and a half. 8.75, I think is good, yeah. Next up is another gallery department DIY. These are these sweatpants. I think I was lucky on this DIY because I thought all sweatpants were the same as this, where you can just like unstitch it, uncuff it or whatever, and then it'll be good to go like that. But there's other sweatpants that have like the cuffs sewn into them the bottom of the pant legs. And I didn't realize that until I finished this. So I'm lucky that the pants that I end up using worked out really well and you can undo them, iron it down. I think the main thing I learned was adding in an inseam panel to the inseam of pants. Never done it before, especially where I had to extend it up to the crotch area. And I managed to make it so that it fits comfortably because I remember when I was doing these pants, I made it like just one width got the whole entire inseam panel. And it fits super weird, super awkward. Like it felt so weird in my inner thigh. And because I tapered it in, it just fits comfortably now. And uh, you know, yeah, lesson learned. Actually, hold up. Another thing that I learned from this project. So the base layer that I use, these sweatpants are from Minimal. The reason why I didn't want to use them or the reason why I didn't really wear them too much is because like they look really, really bright. It's like a bright heather gray. And it was just too light for me, you know? And then just me adding in a couple of dark spots here and there, like this title here, all of the splatters and whatnot, it makes the overall look a lot darker. I mean, even on the backside, adding in this green overspray, it just brings the brightness down a little bit. And that's another thing that I learned that I apply to a lot of stuff that I do now. Now, these right here, these were the most tedious. Holy, my hands and arms and shoulders hurt after I finished making these pants. But these are the Ends Repair Bandana Distress Denim. Oh, did I rate the other ones? The sweatpants, 10 out of 10. All right, cool. But these, I'd rate these a nine and a half out of 10. And the reason why I say that is because these are really stiff, the fit of them. And I'm pretty sure it's because of the temporary adhesive spray that I sprayed onto this, as well as the glue. I just don't like how stiff they are. Now, when it comes to the look, I think they look dope. Maybe I could have distressed them a little bit more. Maybe I could have used a base layer of pants that had more fades on it, make it look a lot more aged and worn. But this is the first pair of pants where I deconstructed completely everything, I mean, except the zipper fly, and then put it back together. So in this project, I was able to figure out the, you know, the ins and outs and the construction of denim pants, or just pants in general. Now I haven't tried it yet, but I think a better way to keep the bandanas in place while you're sewing it in is to baste it. Basically hand sew some sewing thread around the perimeter of the bandana just to hold it in place. And then you can sew in all of these other stitches. Next up, we got the Hoggy Denim DIY. And the last one I learned how to deconstruct pants, but this one is why I really learned how to put everything together, how to create patterns and stuff. Basically from scratch, attach it together to create pants. If you didn't know, I had to make all four panels individually and differently and then put them all together. And in this project, I also learned how to alter patterns to you know, get a fit that I want. Cause I wanted the final pants to be flared out and the original pattern that I used, that I made, they weren't flared. So I was able to draw the adjustments and the alterations so that they will be flared. 
which they are, and I think they are a pretty good length. One of the things I could have done better for these pants is uh, the front pockets here. I should have made them a little bit more bigger, make them a little bit more loose, because right now when I wear these, they're kind of just flat. That's like the biggest issue, the only issue really for these pants. So overall, I give these like a nine and a half out of 10. To be honest, it's kind of hard for me to wear these. Not really sure exactly how to wear it, except with like basic colors like black and white or something. But other than that, yeah, nine and a half out of 10. Cool. Now for the next one, after all the darning and the distress scenes, I was so tired of it. I was like, you know what? We're gonna go back and make another pair of capital pants. These right here are the capital crazy papillion or something like that. Denim. This is one of the projects where it kind of just like fell into place. Things that I thought weren't gonna work out ended up working out in the end. And that being the color of these pants. As you can see, they're yellow. I didn't know that they're gonna be yellow when I dyed them. My original goal was to make them like a wider shade, not yellow. But because of the Calvin Klein jeans that I used, the original color of the denim fabric that manufacturers use was different than Levi's, and that's why it's yellow like this. And at first I didn't really like it, but then I realized that it all just kind of works well with each other because the overall thing is like flowers and butterflies and natures and tie-dyeing and stuff like that. And of course, white would also work, but just the fact that something that I didn't intend to happen, you know, it happened and then it actually worked out. I give these a 10 out of 10 as well. I don't really have any complaints about these. And now for the pants that was completely outside my comfort zone. I didn't know how to tackle it at first. I kind of just like jumped in and went for it. The Raver jeans, the Balenciaga Raver jeans. Now I know the timing was so bad, you know, with everything that with Balenciaga that was happening. But you know, I spent so much time working on these pants. I'm not gonna just scrap the whole thing. I gotta put something out to show for all the work that I've done to make these pants. The majority of it was hand sewn as well. All this stuff here, all hand sewed, even the belt loops straps here. I of course did use a sewing machine. I sewed down the straps here to make them have a clean finish as well as the inseams and outseams of the pants to put it together. But everything else, the front pockets, the cargo pockets, all of that done by hand. And I'm glad that I did hand sew it. It just adds like another level to these pants. And hand sewing is kind of my thing so it kind of adds, you know, my little spice or whatever to it. Now I will say that for this DIY, I spent the most just buying the materials and everything before I spent like a hundred bucks or something like that. You know what DIY is, the point of it is to not spend so much money to recreate something that you like, that you can't really afford or you don't wanna spend that much money for it. So I invested a lot into these pants and I really wanted them to look good in the end. And I think I, I, think I managed to achieve that. The fit of them are perfect the length and everything. Even when I undo the zipper here and make them into shorts, the length of the shorts, I think they fit perfectly for myself, for my size and my length. Also, this is where I worked with studs and rivets a lot more. So I learned a lot from these because I had to do a lot for these. Um, 11 out of 10. <laughs> 11 out of 10, for sure. Now, last but not least, we have the undercover hybrid denim sweatpants. These were honestly really easy to make. <laughs> the most time I spent on these pants was just making sure that the back panels that I had to make were the right size, the graphics were sitting right. They weren't gonna be too cut off when I have to sew them in at the seams and everything. At the bottom, I ended up using the cuff and splicing it in to make it look like a cuff for the bottom part to make it look more like, you know, pants and not just straight up just for one solid panel. Now the thing is I cannot wear these pants without a belt. These are really loose. Before I did anything to them, to the base layer, they were loose already. So after converting the backside into sweats, it's a loose material, so it's even more loose. <laughs> so I gotta wear a belt with these. But these were requested a lot. And hopefully you guys, you know, were able to use that video to recreate it, because these are pretty simple to make. So if they were baggier, I think they'd look a lot better and I give them a 10 out of 10. But for now, I'd probably give them like an 8.75. Out of 10, maybe even actually a nine. What are we doing? Nine out of 10, yeah. But there you guys have it. Those are the 12 DIYs that I worked on this past year. I think for me, 2022 was like a year for learning. All the new knowledge, all the new techniques, all the methods, you know, from all the hand stitchings and the sewings and the darnings and the different panels and everything like that. There's a lot of stuff that I can take away from this year that I can apply to all the projects, all the future projects in 2023. But I appreciate those who watch my videos and I appreciate even more the ones who are subscribed to my channel. So if you're not, hit that subscribe button, it's super easy, it's free. It'll help my channel so much and not gonna lie, it's pretty motivating to see the number go up. <laughs> so all the homies in the Discord, y'all freaking crazy. Like in a good way, y'all super chill and hella talented. 
Holy, y'all freaking crazy. If any of you guys want to start DIYing, if you guys want to meet really chill people who are also into this stuff, join my Discord. Everyone there is super friendly, very helpful. If you have any questions and like how to start, where to start, ask away. Someone's gonna help you because we all really enjoy doing this stuff. So again, link to that in the description below. Again, I am working on the Who Decides War DIY pants. If you wanna keep up to date with what I'm working on with this project and everything else that I'm working on, follow me on my Instagram at Julius Nathan. I usually post updates on my story. So happy holidays and happy new year to all you guys and gals. But I hope you guys are having a good one and I'll see you guys in the new year. I'm out, peace.